we go. You may find yourself in a situation that may or may not benefit from legal action. So with our favorite game here, Case or Not a Case, welcome Tom Merriman from Merriman Legal. It's good to see you again. Oh, it is great to be back. We've been on a hiatus with this Case or Not a Case. It's great to get it back rolling. Great to see you guys. It's wonderful. Legal woes go on, pandemic or not, yes. right? Yes. They do. So now we need to test your knowledge. Here we go. We've, we've had we're been, months been, to brush you know, We're a little rusty, so we'll <laughs> see how this goes. We're going to let you jump right into the first case All right, scenario let's, let's the first one up, it's, oh my gosh, they, they gave me a small card here. It's procrastinating Pete. Okay, he's the, he's the guy who never wants to fill up the gas tank, always thinks he can keep going a little further. Drives his wife nuts. All right. <laughs> procrastinating Pete is driving home late at night. He runs out of gas uh, in a very dangerous neighborhood. Fortunately, he's so close to a gas station, he can smell the gasoline. So he pushes the minivan to the gas station, begins to pump gas. Now, it's a dangerous neighborhood. The gas station has a history of people being robbed there. There's one clerk, there's only one person working there behind bulletproof glass. Pete is scared and sure enough he gets robbed, he gets shot and the guy takes his money and his van. It's daytime television so he survives. Good. He's okay. But the question is, does Pete have a case against the gas station? My initial reaction was no, but I have a feeling somehow he's going to say yes. I would guess no unless the attendant there had something to do with setting a deal up. Interesting. Okay, the answer here. Look at you. is yes, he does. He has a case because of the past history of both the neighborhood being dangerous and the history of violent acts right on the premises. It's foreseeable. So a property owner, whether it's a gas station, a parking garage, it could be a bar, a restaurant. Um, if the owner has some uh, reasonable belief that this can happen, then they have a duty to provide security, to wow. provide reasonable uh, security measures. So I've handled these types of cases, and uh, there's a, they're very fact-specific, so you want to make sure you get a lawyer right away and uh, have them investigate. So you have to Why prove that this lawyer. has happened there before. Right, you have to prove that history. That's the key. All right, let's all right. move on to the next one so we can get all three I of these I think you can you. do better on this next one. I don't know. All right. <laughs> next one is uh, Sally is an inside sales rep for a mortgage company. We'll call her Sweet Talking Sally because she's very good at it. Uh, she sells mortgages over the phone. She, makes, uh, she works 50 hours per week, makes $20 per hour, and she gets non-discretionary commissions and bonuses, which are nice. They're, they're, they're not a lot, but they're less than 50% of her salary. And she makes $30 an hour for her overtime, or 10 hours of overtime. Does Sally have a Fair Labor Standards Act a wage claim against her employer. When we say inside sales, is that a, like that's what I was questioning. Good question. So I should have said that inside sales are people who work in the office on the phone calling out to people okay. as opposed to going to their homes or going to their businesses oh. to sell. I, I initially said yes in my head, but now I want to say no. I want to say no. Go with your first instinct. Darn it. Yes, Sally does. Because her commissions and bonuses are less than 50% of her income, when you calculate her overtime, they have to include that in the time and a half. So there's a lot of inside salespeople who are being cheated, their coworkers being cheated, they're owed a lot of money. And so these are cases, very, again, very fact specific. Give us a call, we'll evaluate it and let you know whether that you have a case. That's part of the Fair Wages Act? Yep, that's right. Interesting. That's right. All right, last one. All right, last one is Motorcycle Mike. He loves his Harley. Now, Motorcycle Mike, uh, Monday through Friday is a dentist. But on the weekend, <laughs> Motorcycle Mike loves to take his Harley right out to Chagrin Falls to the popcorn shop and get an ice cream cone nice. and people watch. Um, now Mike has, he has full coverage on his automobiles, but he has only liability coverage on his motorcycle. Mike is on, on a Sunday afternoon, he's on his way out to Chagrin Falls and an unlicensed, uninsured driver in a pickup truck runs a red light, hits Mike, Mike has to be life flighted to Metro with multiple broken bones. Fortunately, he survives. Does Mike have a viable case against anyone? I've said no on all of these. I, I, it's I, against I, the law not to have insurance, isn't it? And the, it and, is. And the truck driver doesn't have insurance, so there's a problem. Yep. Okay. Um, we'll say yes because I'll say yes. He's going to say no. No, I think he has a case. Okay. I will say this. He has a case, but not a viable case. Okay. okay, and this is, I got to tell you, this is the hardest part of my job is I, I meet with families who've lost a loved one or people who, clients who've been permanently injured and they don't have uninsured or underinsured motives and the person who caused the accident, I have to tell them we found out has either none 
or very little. So you're suing and for nothing. You're suing for nothing. And right. somebody who doesn't have insurance is going to be uncollectible. Yeah. And so the biggest takeaway from every, anything we've talked about today is get uninsured motorists. Get uh, under an uh, uninsured motorist. It's the best insurance you could buy. I don't work for insurance companies. I don't sell insurance. I sue them every day. <laughs> but, boy, you really need it. It's not that expensive. And that's what protects you from the worst drivers on the road. It's so important. I think the biggest takeaway from today is, no matter what your question is, you better have an attorney take a look at it. Because yes. you, you can't guess. You don't know. We I mean, sit here and exactly. guess. Exactly. And it could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars or it, a problem the rest of your life. It, no, that's absolutely right. And every case is nuanced. There's, there's facts that may put you on one side or the other of the yes or no. And so, yeah, give us a call. We do free evaluations, and we'll talk it oh. through. Free. That's why we need yeah. people like Tom. Again, here's his contact information. His email address, Tom, at MerrimanLegal.com, or you could go to their website, MerrimanLegal.com. That's why we have to make those phone calls. It's great to have you we back. don't know oh, always. It's, it's great to see Thank you Thank you, you so much. You great do as well. You do have a little sauce on your... No, did, sorry. did you see that? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to see it. <laughs> I think so. No, you always ate that very well. Very, <laughs> I tried. very clean. I tried. <laughs>